the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame, intermission, and postgame show this side of the Mississippi, south of the Arctic Circle, north of the equator, and above sea level. It's been over a week, but I remember it, and we remember all of you, and we are grateful to all of you who have decided to join us today because it's not just a regular Press Row Show pregame. We have a special guest now in fairness, in full transparency. The man is about to be honored by the Philadelphia Flyers. So he's not with us in this moment, but he was here a little while ago, and we're going to go to it here in a minute. But Wayne Simmons, the man of the day, the man of the hour, the man of the year, man of the decade, Wayne Simmons, here on the Press Row Show pregame. Uh, and I got to listen to about half of it. Yeah, why is that, Russ? I left my house with an hour and a half to get down here. I lost 20 minutes in King of Prussia, and then, I don't know if you heard or not, but the, the traffic around the sports complex, it'd be really great if we could figure out a way to not make this place a disaster, the sports complex. I would love if we Can could I tell find you, some of these entrances, uh, uh, a different exit, Listen perhaps. to me, listen, I, I, this is something, and I'll agree with you on this, because I got down here early and on time for our interview with Wayne Simmons, and coming in, I was trying to come in, now this is an hour and a half before the Phillies game starts, two and a half hours before the Flyers game starts, okay? Yeah. And they don't have, they have certain um, gates for the Wells Fargo Center closed. Yeah. Closed. Yeah. Like, you've started to cause the traffic back up yes. two and a half hours before the Flyers game has begun yep. because you don't have all the entrances open. There's only two, they at the time only had two entrances into the complex open. Yes. And that's a problem. Yes. And it's going to only become a bigger problem when you have a game going on across the street at the same time. So, which, which there is. Yes. You're not there covering it. What happened? Well, I, you know, the Flyers are technically still in this thing, right? Oh, okay. You know, if, if they so, win. So, so you can grace, grace us with your presence today. Yeah, yeah. If they, if they lose today, maybe I'll cover the Phillies on Tuesday, and this will be my in swan In the final song. game? I'll throw you off the balcony. Allegedly. I never would do such a thing. Hypothetically, I've done I'm it a bunch teasing. of times, I'm but teasing. not right now. Anyway. anyway. Let's get to the Wayne Simmons interview before we jump into Flyers Devils. Obviously, we're in a position here. We've talked about this extensively. We had quite the uh, the passionate show earlier in the week about how the Flyers got into this position where they are on the outside looking in, though technically they, they could potentially still have a path in. They're going to need some help. Yeah. We'll get into all of that and into analysis of today's game, but first... Let's throw and, this. And you'll see. And the reason why we had a pre-record, just everybody knows, the reason we had a pre-record with Wayne Simmons, you're going to find out. Because we talk about two things that Wayne Simmons is doing here <clears throat> in the next 30 minutes um, that will be the, why we had to do the uh, interview early. So you'll, 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 right, see, so you'll hear him talk about it. Let's go great. to Wayne Simmons and then come back. Don't run away. Stay here. We have other things that we have to talk to all of you about on Twitter and on Facebook and on YouTube. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, Subscribe over on YouTube, like the video, share the video, subscribe, smash that like button, but ring the bell so you get notified whenever we go live with the show. We have other things to talk about. Do we have an announcement? I don't know. You keep saying that there's an announcement. I keep saying it's not a great time to make the announcement. He wants to make... What do we do? Intern Andrew might be the tie break uh, vote, but we'll We'll, we'll, make we'll that discuss that well, during the Simmer interview. Yeah. Anyway, here is Wayne Simmons. Welcome in to Snow the Goalie, everybody. It is the Flyers penultimate game here against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Flyers trailing in the playoffs, but really we're not here for that right now. We'll get to that after. We are here with the man of the hour, the man of the weekend, longtime Philadelphia Flyer, Wayne Simmons, one of the truly great guys I've been around in the game, a great Philadelphia Flyer. And Simmer, thanks. First of all, thanks for coming here. And tell us what this means to you. I mean, it's, it's really, it doesn't happen to a lot of players. Uh, where you get saluted at right at the end of your career, but boy, this has got to be an amazing feeling. Uh, thank you guys for having me, first of all. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit overwhelming, but it, it's been awesome. Um, you know, just being able to bring my children and, you know, show them Philadelphia. Um, you know, none of them were born when I played here. My wife was pregnant with our oldest um, when I got traded, so it's been special for me to bring them here and show them what Philadelphia is all about um, because the city and this organization, you know, means a lot to me and, um, you know, they treated me unbelievable. So it's, um, it's an honor. Is yeah. it, is it like, it's been like just coming right back to like everything came back to you. All this, a lot of stuff comes flooding back yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, uh, there's been a lot of reminiscing and, um, you know, seeing a lot of people that I've, I've seen meeting up with friends and stuff like that, you know, that I've had in the city for a long time. So, um, you know, the last couple of days have been truly amazing. Now, you're going to get to do something that not a lot of people get to do. Uh, and we can say this, I think, because it's not, by the time this airs, it won't be that big of a deal. But you're going to drop the, drop the puck 
What do, you, what do you anticipate that feeling is going to be like going, th- you know, coursing through your veins when you have um, all those fans screaming for you when you're out when you're out there? I'm a little bit nervous right now. <laughs> I, I, have, I haven't been this nervous in a long time. My hands, my palms are sweating. I'm <laughs> constantly rubbing them on my jeans. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be a great feeling. I know I, it's going to be it, an it, unbelievable feeling to have the, the fans going crazy. I'm, I, I tell you what, and, and I'm going to say this. I think it's going to be one of the loudest receptions we've seen here in this building. Anthony, I know we have Wayne beforehand. I would embarrass him a little bit here right now. But you know what? That's what you get. When you do what you did for this city, for this team, and this crest for as long as you did, Samer, I got to tell you a quick story. And uh, you probably didn't even realize it at the time. I went through my own personal recovery from, from alcohol at the end of my career. And when I turned into broadcasting, um, especially when I went to TV, I was alone in a lot of ways. And, and I think there's not a lot of players that realize when you make a transition to something different than what you're comfortable with. Um, that was different for me, asking questions. I'm probably better at it now because I've just done it for so long. Um, but I wanted to thank you for you being there for me all the time. You know, and I'd look down the bench. It was a rough period. And I'd say, they'd say, who do you want? I'd say, I'm just going to get Simmer. I trusted you. You gave honesty to the people every time. And for me, knowing that I needed that one guy that would be my right-hand dude to, to go to, you were my go-to guy. And I can't thank you enough for that. It was so meaningful to me at a time that I was struggling and, and, and just coming to the game some nights was difficult. But I can't thank you enough for that, Simmer. No, honestly, Bundy, it, it means a lot, especially coming from somebody like you. Um, like you said, you don't realize, um, you know, the impact you have on a lot of lives. And for me, I think just talking to people over the last few days, um, the impact I did have, you know, in Philadelphia, I didn't really, um, you know, the gravity of it, I never really understood um, until now. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of chokes me up because it's, it's crazy. It, yeah. It's like, like you don't think about it, right? And then like you're so focused on like your game and you know winning and everything like that. And you kind of, I kind of just you know went about you know you know what I did because it's just who I am as yeah. a person, right? Yeah. And it's and that speaks volumes about you. That's why I try to say there's a great hockey player. There's an amazing competitor. The drop his gloves, take hits, give hits, score big goals. But there's a greater person in there, and that's what I. That's why I was so adamant about having you up here. I. We could not have you here for Anthony, for guy, for what you've done for everyone. You've touched every person, Simmer, and I and I really you, you've been one of the great flyers. And I'll say, I have people say, who are your two two of your favorite flyers? Mark Howe and Wayne Simmons. That's and that may be hard for you from a guy 14 years older, but you know what? You you were you embodied and personified what this city is. And I, and I think I speak for the entire city, certainly our Snow Lagoli community, when I say that. And thank you. It's extremely humbling, um, you know, because. For me, where I came from, and you know what I had to battle through to even get here, it's, it's it's crazy to me. So I, honestly, Bundy, I really appreciate your words. It, it means a lot. You know, Simmer, I don't, I don't have that personal story that Bundy has because I was covering the team for a lot of years before you even got here. But I will, I can say this: that from a media perspective, it, it it's very similar because you know we have our crutches too, mm-hmm. and like guys that we're like, who are we going to talk to after this game, <laughs> yeah. right? And you were always available. Like, it, you didn't, it didn't matter if you were getting treatment, you would come out. Like, you were always there and always willing to talk to us. So, like, that's kind of a, you know, for, for us, that's yeah. kind of a big deal, too. No, I, I always felt like you, you have to be present. You have to be accountable for, you know, whatever's going on, whether good or bad. So, I think that's just the way I was raised. You know, my parents yeah. raised me that way, um, to be accountable. And if, you know, if things are going bad, you got to answer for it. If things are going good, you speak as well, right? So, um, uh I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of lost for words. You know, it, it, no, I mean, it's, it's a great <laughs> night, and I, I'm so happy for you. But, you know, I was going to say something. Like you, you, so welcome to the alumni. Thank you. It's probably Thank the two. Everyone hates hearing that when you're done, but I got it too. Welcome <laughs> to the alumni. I'm like, really? So we're here. But what, what is afterlife? What does after hockey look for you? You got to see a beautiful young family, yep. your wife in the pictures. What does that look like for you territorially? I mean, you're going to look for jobs, stay in the game. Yeah, hopefully I can. Get a job here. It'd, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but you know, right now, I've you know just been a home stay-at-home dad, honestly. Um, they gave me a job simmer, so I'm sure they'll find <laughs> one for you, pal. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just been a stay-at-home dad. You know, taking the kids to school, picking them up from school, and um, you know, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's, you know, it's you're not always with your family when you're playing, right? You're, yeah. You're home for a couple of days and then you're gone, and it's like you don't even really you know them. So it's been a, a more of an introduction. I honestly, God, my so. My youngest daughter, um, you know, I felt like we didn't even have, like, an unbelievable connection or anything like that when I was done my career. And then last year when we lost out in playoffs, um, I literally, I, we had, like, a, um, a, a program, like, a system. Like, I take her to the park every single day. And, like, our bond grew so much. And, yeah. Um, 
you know, it, it just, it's, it's meant so much to me. And now we've got a four month old son. He's turning five months soon in a couple of days. And um, to be able to be home with them and see them, um, you know, all the time and, and not having to do these FaceTimes and stuff like that, it, it's been um, great. Simmer, I've, there'd be nothing greater for us, I know, than have you working here with the team well, and some f- faculty. And, and, and look, we know Jonesy and Dan Hilferty watch this thing, right? Yes. Guys, get them in here. Yeah. Let's go. Get like, I mean here. it, too. Like, we need another guest other than LeClaire and Barubi, <laughs> so we'd love to have Simmer on standby. Uh, now, now you mentioned being nervous for tonight, palms being sweaty. I'm going to give you something. I found out that there's something else to be that you might have to be nervous about. This team is, you know, the Flyers are still trying to claw their way into the playoffs you're reading the starting lineup in the locker room tonight, yeah? Yeah, yeah I got to figure out what I'm going to say. I got to pump the boys up. Right? <laughs> Fire them up, Simmer. We need, uh, we need the rest of these points, every single one that we can get. So yeah. We can make this playoffs, right? So, um, you know, for me, um, it, it'll be a little bit different, obviously, going in that. And I know, like, being a leader on the team in the past, like, it, it's easy to speak in front of guys that you go to war with yes. all the time, right? But when you don't know them, like, on a personal level, um, I think it's a little bit harder. And I think that's when the nerves come in. I have one last question. Uh, style of play. Yep. You were probably one of the guys that transcended the last generation to this one. Mm-hmm. And you may be the last of its kind in a lot of ways. Do you see that? I know you still see some fighting, like yeah. Rempe comes in. But in terms of the guy that is that total team defender that can play, you don't see those guys a lot anymore, Wayne. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's, it's crazy. The skill, the, the skill in this league is it's through the roof, and that's probably why I'm not playing anymore. Lacking the <laughs> combo, you, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't see a lot of, like you said, there's not a lot of – um, dual guys that go out there, um, score a lot of goals, or you know, and, and at the same time, you know, fight for their teammates. So, um, I came up obviously in an era where that's that's what it was. Yeah, and everybody did it. And then there was no questions asked. Everybody did it. Right? Whether you liked it or not. Yeah, exactly. You had no <laughs> choice. I remember. Um, I remember my. It was my first year or second year in, in LA, and um, you know, I was doing a little bit of fighting, but I was just one time something happened, and Sean O'Donnell came up to me and he's like, "I can't fight everybody, Simmer." And he literally looked at me and he's like, you, he's like, you can fight, you know, you can, he's like, I need a little bit of help here. And honestly, ever since then, that was like in my brain, that was engraved in my brain and I, I, I lived it. So best, best playoff memory here for you. And we'll let you go after this. Oh, um, I have one more. You got one more. Yeah, okay, yeah, go yeah. Ahead. Best playoff memory, hat trick against the, uh, the New York Rangers. I love it. To send it to game seven. That was my best memory. That was the back to back night, right? Yeah, we yeah, played yeah. the next night yeah, again. So yeah. We got on the train and we, we flew to, I should have saved a couple goals for, uh, <laughs> for that next game. But yeah, you had an empty netter in that series too, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So that was, um, yeah, I know. Every every time I, I put on that jersey, um, you know, it was special for me. But Bundy's got a memory like a steel trap. He remembers everything. Uh, the last question I wanted to ask you, and I, and I think this is kind of important to kind of get to, you know, um, one of the things that you did when you were here, you were very involved with the Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation. Yeah. Uh, you remain on their, their board, yep. um, which is pretty incredible since you haven't been here for several mm-hmm. years, right? What does that program mean to you, and and why was it important for you to stay involved with it even after you were done playing for the Flyers? Um, I, it was extremely important for me. I saw a lot of kids who looked like me um, and came from situations like mine when I was younger, right? So I think when representation, I think it, it, it means a lot in this game, right? And I think when you extend yourself, you know, to kids who don't know that they actually have an opportunity to do what, what you do, mm-hmm. um, it's extremely important to, you know, to be there and be present and show up and, you know, let them know that um, not only, you know, is this going to be for you, but, you know, you can excel at what you're doing. That's awesome. Simmer, you're the best, buddy. We love you. Um, super proud for you today. Thank you. We'd be cheering for you up here when I see you, that puck on the ice and for you and your family. And, um, Oh, I mean, this now, this means he's a mainstay now, right? Mainstay. Now, you're Absolutely. now an official member of Snow the Gold. You got a future, in, you got a future in podcast. You a, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Simmer, have a great night, buddy. Thank we love guys. you and, yeah. uh, and, have a, and have an uh, unbelievable time. I, I'm expecting a monster, monster crowd uh, smash tonight for you, buddy. No, it's going to be well really deserved. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Good Wayne. stuff. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was. Number 17 in your program, number one in your hearts, Wayne Simmons. How about the fact that he wants to come work here? Well, how about that? That's that's something, huh? I like that you made the uh, you made the pitch out there to, uh, I did. to Jonesy and to Hilferty. Well, we know that they're going to listen. Well, listen, there's some other people who work for this organization who listen to the podcast too. They probably wouldn't acknowledge it, but they do. Well, I mean, well, they're, they're the biggest decision makers, right? When it comes to you know who yes. to hire. Yeah. So you go you go with the you go with the CEO and the president. Start yeah. there. Yeah. 
and, you know, maybe have to work your way down eventually. But uh, did you put a poll out on that? I did not because you got really huffy about how I wanted to word it. Well, the way you worded it the second time was, was fine. The way I worded it the first time is fine. It's just, you know, you're very sensitive. But um, I'll, I, fine. I'll put, it, I'll put it on the poll for people to vote because people have been very vocal in the comments about where they think Wayne Simmons should work within the organization. And so instead of naming names, I'll play the, the Anthony Sanfilippo, you know, don't be a sensationalist or whatever, Rich. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. There, there. There's a reason that I've been around for 24 years and could maybe possibly be around for another 24. It's because I know how to play that game, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So your, your second wording was so much better than your, than your first. So go ahead. What's the poll? All right. So I'm putting this over on the poll over <laughs> on, uh, on YouTube right now. So if you're on Twitter or you're on Facebook, you don't get to participate in the poll. That's why you go over to YouTube. YouTube.com slash at Snow the Goalie, or you go into the search bar and you type in Snow the Goalie. Where would you rather see Wayne Simmons work for the Philadelphia Flyers? Would you rather see him as a coach, or would you rather see him as an analyst? Now, there are a lot of people saying a certain kind of coach in the comments that Ant doesn't want to well, no, they can, the, the, the fans can, can say what they well, want. There's been a lot of people. And we can discuss it based oh, off of what people say. Yeah. But that's brought up by the fans. That's so not us. Saying, people that's are not saying us in the comments. generating it. Yeah, correct. Big difference. The, I don't know if intern Andrew's been bringing them up on on the screen or not. But you know, people are saying, "Hey, Wayne Simmons, power play coach. Wouldn't that be something? That would be something. Could Wayne Simmons play on the power play for these next two <laughs> games? That also might be something. Might be even more yeah. impactful. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I did see other people saying perhaps he should be an analyst. Yeah, you know, could, I, could, it's could, interesting. Could, could Wayne Simmons do well on TV? I think he could. Could he do well on radio? I think he could. Could he perhaps? We, we have enough space. Well, you heard four, Bundy. We, you, we have four mics. We have an extra seat. Like we, we you heard we could expand you, the press row. Show. You heard Bundy say to him, "We're tired of getting Leclerc <laughs> and Chief. We're tired of getting Leclerc and Chief. So if we have Simmer, Simmer around, we can bring him on more go. regularly, right? Maybe. So Why that not? would be kind of cool. Por qué no? That would be kind of cool. We do have enough space for a fourth seat. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. Throwing it out. Throwing it out. Throwing it out to the people. Well, we kind of already have a, a fourth seat. It's, Intern know. Andrew. Yeah. Who we love and appreciate. Who's on the other side of the glass. On the ones and twos. <laughs> you like that? On the ones and twos. That's such like an that. old radio reference. Uh-huh. On the ones and twos. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Some people, some people try to do radio as a podcast. Some people try to do podcasts <laughs> as a radio. Some people wish they could get the viewer number that we have right now on YouTube alone, let alone the other platforms. Some people make hundreds of thousands of dollars to get 100 people to watch. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just cr- I don't know how it happens. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, yeah. let's get back to the game tonight, shall we? Let's shall. Flyers, Flyers Devils. Flyers Devils. Now, this is a pivotal game, obviously, for your team, your town, your Philadelphia Flyers. Because they still technically have a chance of making the playoffs. 14, now, 14% according to Money Puck. Well, Money Puck has never been wrong before. <laughs> so I don't, if, I don't the, the percentage thing drives me crazy, but that's all right. Okay. They use computer models, and sometimes computer models are helpful. You know? Sure. This is, this is in fact, an election year. Sure. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of money how, to do polls. Here's how helpful the computer model is. Yeah. Go back to the, the start of the eight game losing streak. I believe their, well, their percentage chance. It was like 80 something, I think. Yes. And then they lost eight straight games. They puked all over themselves. In other for eight words, straight games, it, it, it has, has the percentages. Those things happen. Because the computer model probably didn't say, mm, this team that continues to be competitive against teams they, you know, they really shouldn't right. be. Is going to go vomit all over themselves for eight straight games. Correct. And yes, of course. Against bad teams. And of course, the answer bad is, teams. the answer is, well, they left the 14% possibility that, that something like that could happen. Of course they did. Of course they did. I get it. Yeah. But the reality of it is, is it's just like, stop worrying about the percentages. Uh, People talk way. about the percentages more now than ever before. Before, it used to just be, you know, what's the magic number? Like what's or what's the tragic number if you're going to be eliminated? Sure, that's all you have to really focus well, on. I mean, fairness, Don't worry like about the percentage chances of it happening because that's done by a computer. That's not. Oh. That's not done as. It's not. Doesn't hey. take the human hey. Hey. element into this show. Is done by a computer. Eh? Eh? Computers all are right. good for a lot. That's right. You you make sure you make sure you're nice to our future tech overlords. All right. Uh, Let's be nice. I used AI this past week a lot. Oh, jeez. I got to tell you about that. And then he got fired. Yeah. All right. So no, not to write. No. The um, 
the Flyers enter this game with the 13th worst record in hockey, 13 fewest points. Yeah. In, in fact, we know this because prior to them beating the Rangers in a very unexpected result at Madison Square Garden, the Flyers were in position that they could have potentially cracked that top 10, at least in terms of fewest points in the league, put yourself in good position for the draft lottery because, again, they lost their two games. But you look at that now because I do want to take a look at that picture really quick. Flyers, 85 points. Minnesota, the 12th fewest points, uh, have 83 points with a game in hand on the Flyers. Is it possible that Minnesota, Fletcher Mort's former team, could potentially jump the fly- is it, I don't know. It's out there. Seattle, meanwhile, has uh, two games in hand, 79 points. Less likely that they're going to jump the Flyers. Well, they're playing right now. What's the score right I now? I, I'm one, not, I'm last I saw, I think it was one nothing, but it might have changed. We will uh, we'll get our crack stat team, the Snow the Goalie stat crew, to figure it out. Oh, he, there he is. Look, he's turning his mic on. What, what was the score you wanted? Kraken. Uh, they're losing 2-0 to Dallas. 30 seconds left in the second. Yeah. All right, so yeah. Seattle's not going to jump the Flyers. Anyway, let's look at this from a positive perspective, shall we? I mean, some people would look at the draft standing and say that is a positive, but let's let's live in the playoff hypothetical. The, the thing that the Flyers really, had they not vomited all of themselves for eight games, would have absolutely been in perfect position to enter the postseason. Let's look at it from that vantage point. As things stand right now, the Flyers are in decent enough shape, but they are going to need help. And they, it is obviously critical that they win in the next two games. The Devils are out. The Capitals are very much in. Well, in play. What, what are, what Not are, in. well, I'm saying they're in, I, yeah. I'm, I'm saying Pittsburgh, the Devils are Pittsburgh out, has like the they're spot. out of contention and, yeah, and yeah. Washington is in. When you look at this, what do you think the odds are right now that Flyers caps on Tuesday night ends up being for the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. 14%. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things. No, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be. Because I think that the I think that the Penguins will get the points that they need. They only yeah. need Penguins need 3 points and they're in. Yeah. That, that's it. 3 points and they're in. And so, like I I don't know. I I just think yeah, they, their schedule's not easy, but they're playing such great hockey right now. I don't see the Penguins just suddenly doing what the Flyers did and vomiting all over themselves yes. and dropping out of it. Like I, like, I think that they could play 500 hockey in these three games, and, and they're in. And so at that point, it doesn't make a difference what the Flyers or the Capitals or the Red Wings do, right? Yeah. So I mean, as things stand right now, the Islanders are third in the net. Well, the Islanders lost today in overtime. I don't know if that if your standings updated that or not. Was that their 80th game or their 81st? They got they I got think that, th- was their, that was their 80th I think they're game. at nine, 90 points. They're now? at 90 points. Yeah, they have two games left. Yeah, yeah. So they're at 90 points. So with two games to play. Yeah. If the Flyers win the next two games, the most they could end up with is 89. Correct. So no matter what, they can't jump the Islanders, who, by the way, they played recently and could have put out of playoff contention. This is why we always come back to it's critical to win the games where you have the chance to put your foot on their throat. Yeah. Same thing happened with Pittsburgh. Remember when we said it was, well, it was yeah, a few but it weeks wasn't, ago? Yeah, we said, but it, it wasn't, was, we, nobody thought Pittsburgh was going to get back into it at that point. No, but at that point, when we were talking about the game and we were analyzing the game, it was put Pittsburgh out. This will officially put that them all yeah, the way out. That would have absolutely put them out. And but. instead, Pittsburgh is now sitting above you with, uh, with an extra point and a game in hand. Yeah. Not ideal. No, the, so the you, Flyers but, but are not you, in an ideal spot. Even with think, two wins, they need help. So to be clear, though, you think that Pittsburgh is going to be the team to get in, and you think that Tuesday's game is essentially going to be inconsequential. It depends on what Correct. day the Penguins' games are. So I don't know when the Penguins' last game is. Is it, is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? So the, their last game is, a, uh, I think it's a home game against the Islanders. The day, uh, so it'll be Wednesday. It's the day after so, the Flyers oh! are done. So, so the Flyers' game could still have meaning. On Tuesday night. As long but as it's the not, Islanders take out the, the Penguins on Wednesday. Uh, but it's not going to be a win and get in game. Because the Penguins are going to have a chance. It's to, a win and put yourself in position to yes. hope that Sidney Crosby yes. falls on his face. C- could be. But the, Isl- the Islanders may have nothing to play for. They could play spoiler. But if they're if that game means nothing, if the Islanders are in the playoffs and they're locked into their spot, do you honestly think they're going to play their best players against the Penguins with the playoffs starting two days later? Yeah. No, they'll give them a rest. I do. No. I don't. I, I don't. 
with I, the chance to play spoiler no, against, against, a, against a team you hate? They're in. They're in. They don't, they won't care. Anthony, I don't know if you know about hockey coaches, but they <laughs> they don't play to lose, Anthony. <laughs> hockey players don't play to lose, Anthony. Yes, but that's a different scenario. That's that's in keeping your team healthy. Well, for you know the playoffs. what? If you're not going to play your players two days before the playoffs starts, you're a wimp, and you shouldn't be in the playoffs in the first place. The, they should just take the Islanders out. They should revoke their playoff there access. You go. Just take them out. Put the next best team in. Not my playoff team. Yeah. All right. So tonight is obviously a big game. The Devils entered the season. I think when we looked at the at the division, we thought that the Devils would probably be in playoff contention, that they would likely be one of the top three teams. N- not only did I think they would be in playoff contention, Russ, I thought that this was a team that had a shot to win the division and be a representative out of the Eastern Conference to go to the Stanley Cup final. I didn't pick them at the beginning of the year, but I thought that they were going to be at the top of the top of the standings and, and be a team that could be there at the end. And they completely, completely, you're talking about a team that, you, you uh, use your phrase, that vomited all over themselves. They did it for far more than eight games. They, they did it for 70-some games. Yeah. It's unbelievable how poor of a season they had. Yep. Uh, hey, by the way, I'm going to end the poll over on YouTube. 77% of respondents say they would rather see Wayne Simmons as a coach than an analyst. Again, perhaps there will be an opening at some point. Maybe. That's the fans. If not, if not here, you have to remember, too. That's really, the fans. you know, but you see, but that's you know, seventy-seven percent of the people, and I get it, I understand it. That's more than two-thirds. That's great, but if that's he's more a, than three-fourths. But, but if he's, but if he becomes a coach, then how often are we going to have him on press row show? Well, it all depends, right? Are what? you going to you going to start a spat? You going to start a spat with him? <laughs> huh? You going to say his fingerprints were all over something? Huh? Oh, uh, huh? stop it! Huh? Stop it! Well, I'm just saying. I'm just throw, I'm just throwing it out there. All right, just throwing it out there. Um. Let's talk about. I, I don't want to get into next year. Like it's really easy to start looking forward to. No, I think you still year, have to look at the game. First of all, just to, to announce, Urson's in net. In case anybody doesn't know, it's same lineup as against the Rangers. Thank God, I, may, I put him on the thumbnail for the. Yeah, the show. no, no changes to the lineup from the other night. Um, so, so that's the thing. Um, just so everybody knows, but I, this is an this is an important game. Look, the Devils, unlo- you know, much like Montreal and much like Buffalo and much like Columbus. And Chicago and all those bad teams that beat the Flyers, they don't they're playing free and easy at this point, right? They're just like, yeah, you know, yeah, they want to get through the season. I get it. But it's not their last game, so they know they still have time after today. They're playing for, you know, for jobs for next year. Like guys are are, are look, you know, no people are watching and looking and seeing how they're playing. They're playing free and loose. Flyers played a really good game against the Rangers. A really good game, and I feel like they finally played free and loose. And maybe it was because they looked and they looked up and saw we only have a four percent chance now making the playoffs. Just go out and play, yeah. and it and it finally worked. Um, so that's why I think this is a tough one to call. Not to mention, we've all been terrible with our picks of late. We have been. I mean, that is true. I, Bundy's on a six-game losing streak. It's bad. Andrew, uh, Andrew, and I, intern Andrew and I have each lost five of the last six, and you've lost four of the last six. Like it's it's pretty darn. Although bad. I've won one of the last three, so that <laughs> that's how I like to. Like you, you've bat you've backed into the lead here. Yeah, so like let's <laughs> let's get into that really quickly before Bundy gets over here. Which by the way, we gotta we gotta check on our man and make sure uh, he sends over his pick if he's not gonna come meandering over here. But oh, he should be over momentarily. As things stand, entering tonight's game, I am currently in the lead with forty five points. Yep. You are in second place with forty four points. Correct. Bundy is in Here third with 43 points. Now, he knew that we were talking about. That's yeah. why he's showing up. A- Andrew's going to get the camera ready. Somebody get, like, somebody cue up the Stone Cold Steve Austin music, yeah. the Glass Shatters <laughs> music when Bundy shows up. Okay, By the way, there was, he's being so polite. There, oh, was, somebody, there was somebody earlier who uh, who dropped their chicken fingers over there. It was a really sad moment. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, we got, oh, Gritty. We got Gritty. Gritty. Gritty just showed up on, over our oh, shoulder. There, oh, he Where's was he here going? and he's going away. We have, oh, this guy. This, All right. This, so is, anyway. this is what it's like dealing with you. Bundy's like two. Bundy's two points back. He's one point back of you, correct? Correct. Oh. A perfect Inter- sco- a perfect score gets uh, gets him right back on top. Intern Andrew, Good. thirty-two right. points, despite the fact that I I think he didn't pick the first sixteen ga- no the first seventeen games uh, that we were part of. So he's still it, two games under five hundred overall. Yeah, but you know what? He's he's still, I'm five hundred. You're two over. Enough. Impressive enough. Yeah. Speaking of impressive. 
Bundy's here. Hey, what's Bundy, up? We're talking about the standings. About I'm I'm up 45 points. Ant has 44. You have 43. We're very close. The next two games are obviously critical, not just for the Flyers, but for us in our standings. Well, um, and you know what? You know what's interesting to note, Bundy. During that entire four-game road trip, did Russ ever once ask us for our picks? No. We had to send them to him to remind yeah. to remind him. He's a cheater. Um, it does. You know what he does? He actually uses us as like Jimmy the Greek. It's not true. <laughs> and and no, it's true. It's and, not. And you know, no, it is, dude. You know what? You, you use me and Anthony. You don't even know Jimmy the Greek is. You know what, dude? <laughs> You punked us. He's a, he's a, he's, no, he's, you know, he's, no, you are. You know, you are. You're Rusty the Greek. <laughs> Rusty the Greek. <laughs> Anybody in the seventies and eighties knows Jimmy the Greek? But that's it. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Anyway, it's fantastic. Hi, everybody. Tonight's Good game. To be with you. Tonight's game, big. We got to get down to it, guys. Down to brass tacks. The Flyers need to win both games in order to have a shot, and then they'll need Pittsburgh to lose especially on Wednesday in their final game against the Islanders. Well, they could lose and tonight. They're in Boston. They could. Boston's got something. I mean, listen. I mean, or is that, is that at Pittsburgh. home? Pittsburgh. It's in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, it's in Pittsburgh losing out would be perfectly fine. I don't think it'll happen, but it's perfectly fine if they want to. Listen, I mean, after after what we've seen the last nine games, I mean, you go lose eight in a row uh, against Cupcakes, especially the last four, and then you go hammer the New York Rangers. Like, anything can happen. And the Devils, the, the, the trick tonight in this game will be to not fall into the game of pond hockey. Yeah. Like, the Devils want to play like they did against the Leafs the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, no Jack Hughes in this hockey game today, which will help. Um, but, again, there's guys that have skill. He's sheer. There's other guys that are going to want to get up. They're going to want to make it easy. The Flyers want success. They got to go in and pound this team, establish, uh, establish a forecheck. Their D and their goaltending has been weak this year, and that's why I'm going to say 5-2. I was, I was gonna predict first, so you don't have to oh, okay, accuse me of. Well, I'm gonna say it anyway. Five, four, Flyers. All right. Go ahead, Russ. Um, in my heart of hearts, I think the Flyers are gonna lose. However, there's part of me that wonders if, because I always say this, this team does not do well on nights where it's like a big, like where you expect them to have the adrenaline boost because they're honoring somebody or because there's like a big thing. They typically come out flat in those games. So in my in my brain, I'm saying they lose. But in my heart, I want to believe, as I said the other day, I want to see a playoff team. I want us up here doing playoffs. And as such, I'm going to pick the Devils to lose today. The Flyers are going to win three to two. Go ahead, Andrew. I'll take the Flyers four to three. Now it all comes down to Ant if he wants to try to, you know, get cute. What was your score? No, well, see, 4-3. Four, 4-3 four, three. Four, three is what okay. he said. Uh, but see, that's the difference between you and me. I don't get cute. I, I stick with what I was going to say all along, and as I have a Flyers winning this game, I do think it's going to be a little bit more of a higher scoring game. Uh, even though Jack Hughes isn't playing for, for the Devils, I do think that this is a game that will be on the higher end, but I'm going to take the Flyers winning this one 5-3. Okay. Now, you wanted to make an announcement before. Did you get an answer that is advantageous to us that... Uh... No, the answer that you wanted to the, to the question from before is not yet. Okay. But I still think we can make the announcement. I think we could hold off. I don't even know what you're talking about. What, so. do, you, what do you think the odds are that we get what, what has been requested before the end of the game? It's probably 50-50. Okay. First intermission. Yes, sir. Like, regardless, we'll make the announcement right, first. First intermission. intermission. Come back first intermission. We have a nice uh, announcement here about Snow the goalie. Yes. So come back. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. We get to string you along for 20 more minutes. That's all. It's a, yeah, that's what it's all about. And we have a guest coming up. I think first intermission too, right? Yeah, uh, Scott Tharp, I think from Snyder Hockey, is going to come. And they have okay. an event after there's a game being played, so they're going to talk about that. They're supposed to come up, and as we do here, we'll just play it by ear. All right. Sounds good. Game's about to start. Everybody, enjoy the game. We'll talk to all of you in the first intermission here on the Press Row Show.
welcome back to Snow the Goalie Press Row Show. Where's Russ? Well, we have two special guests. So we, we, we kicked Russ out for a couple minutes, right, Bundy? We, we made a habit of it tonight. Tonight, yeah, it's yes, just like we, we, we decided we don't need Russ anymore. Uh, but no, well, we have two special guests with us. We have Ryan LeMay, uh, who's a Snyder Hockey uh, board member uh, with Goldman Sachs, and also Burt Podbear, the CFO of CrowdStrike Cybersecurity. Uh, there is an, a big Snyder hockey event that is happening after the game today. Wanted to have you guys on for a couple minutes to talk about it. It's the Pro-Am. So I don't know which one of you guys wants to take it first. Why don't you tell everybody what the Pro-Am is and what it's, you know, what the purpose of it is for, for you today. Sure, I'm happy to. So uh, two years ago, Bert and I came up with the idea of having a game with adult beer league hacks like the two of us alongside retired NHL players and to do that and raise money for charities. The original idea came up after we had a few too many drinks <laughs> at, a, at a dinner with one of his friends who knew a couple of former Canadians who would play. And we thought we'd get them down. It sounded great at the time. The next day we said, are we serious? We both said yes. And I reached out to Scott at Snyder and said, let's do this through Snyder Hockey. And let's make it a great event. Let's raise money. So we did the first one last year. We were at the Pen Ring. We had a great time. Yeah. We had six or seven pros play with us. And we've expanded this year. Now we're at Wells Fargo Center after the game tonight. And we've got uh, almost 15 pros participating in this event. That's fantastic. That's that, fantastic. Let's be very clear. I said yes after a lot of bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it would take a lot for me to say yes, too, to be honest with you. Um, my understanding is, is that the, the number that you guys are going to end up raising from this event is, is kind of staggering. Yes. Uh, Scott from Snyder Hockey, Scott Tharp, said that, you know, uh, so far, you've got, I think, uh, $300,000 in sponsorships. And then once you get all the other money raised and you include Ed Snyder's match, that this is going to raise about a million dollars, which that's, is fascinating, right? I mean, am I, that, that's I, correct. I, I'm, I'm not lying with that number, right? You're not lying. We'll, nope. be, we'll be close to a million dollars when everything's said and done. Last year, we raised $300,000, and we wow. expanded it phenomenally this year. Uh, CrowdStrike uh, sponsored one of the teams. And we'll be wearing CrowdStrike jerseys on one team. We'll be wearing Snyder jerseys on the other. The Snyder team's going to win, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but we've all reached out to all of our friends and contacts. A number of people from Goldman Sachs have stepped up. And a number of people from CrowdStrike have stepped up. We've raised a ton of money for a, really a phenomenal organization and a great cause. And, and what color is CrowdStrike going to be wearing? So our, our logo is red. Red? Yep. But I think tonight, are you giving me the white shirt? Yeah, or we're, red. Red we're red with the Falcon. Our Falcon is our so logo. Are they splitting the pros for you guys tonight? The pros are split evenly. Okay. okay. Evenly, that's what, you know, Ryan's evenly. He got to choose, so, yeah. you know. So, so, who's, so, so, so who's playing? Who's, okay. Tell us else we got. So, uh, Team CrowdStrike, uh, the pros on Team CrowdStrike are Mark Howe. Oh, NHL okay. NHL Hall of Famer. He's got the clap out. Eric, Eric Bergdorfer, uh, uh, Riley Cote, okay. and Stefan Matteau. Oh. Stephan Mateau. Mateau, Mateau. 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 Mateau from 94 with the Rangers. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. And then on Team Snyder, uh, we've got Sam Moran, Patrick Sharp, uh -huh. heavy Flyers content on this team, uh, The Fridge, Okay. Uh, Scott Hartnell, and uh, Dominic Moore from the Rangers, and Pierre Turgeon. Yeah, that's you guys are going to take it's that. Yeah, it's that's so a, that's I, I, something tells me you were fought deep into the bottles of wine when you guys split those players up. You know, <laughs> unknown, unknown to Ryan, I've already gone around to his players and offered them a whole bunch to cop the puck up to us. <laughs> so maybe we have a chance. So, you know, I, I actually so I, played in an alumni game last week for Brian Prop for his headstrong. Yeah. And I just want to let you guys know if you're expecting the 15 year ago version of the NHL guys, think again. <laughs> And I'm speaking from experience. We, we also have Boxcar Hospital refing. Oh, he's oh, already, oh yeah. he's well, you won't call any penalties right. anyway. No, 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 he, 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 said he, he said he will. He already said he's available for hire. And whichever side gives him more money, we'll get more penalties. That's fantastic. Team, so That's we're, fantastic. We're, we're working it downstairs at the bar. Now, are fans able to stick around to watch this? Or? Unfortunately, no. Oh, we're working on that. Maybe next year. Maybe that, next that would be really That's, cool. That's the next level. Yeah. The next See that? Level. Yeah. So you, went from Pen, you went from Penn Rink yep. to Wells Fargo to yep. now maybe next year have the fans yeah, stick and, around. And I would have actually played tonight if I would have known about the event before yesterday at noon. You had your gear? <laughs> uh, I do not have my, I don't even have my gear. Um, well, you know what the problem is with that? It's Bundy needs about a week and a half to train. I guess. <laughs> right? About, and that's all you need, like a week and a half. I worry more about the training than the game. <laughs> I saw him play 
the alumni game against the Bruins. You look pretty solid. I was fine that night. I did. I was in training. Yes. Oh, there you go. Three times I skated the month before. Yes. So I was training. Yes. <laughs> we were just disappointed that he didn't register a point in that game. We were very upset about that. That's we right. By the way, well, I forgot. He's got Riley Cote. I, I didn't say Riley's name. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that, that, hey, that Riley, Riley still plays. Riley's 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 still, Riley Riley's can still skate a little bit. If yeah. you guys, I don't know if I'll see him, but if you could please say hello to Pierre Turgeon for me. Yeah, I played with him in Dallas. I loved him. What a great teammate. Another Hall of Famer. Yeah. And uh, please do that. The other, all the other ones I see. Yeah. <laughs> great. He's, a, he's awesome. a gentleman. Yeah, awesome. a real, 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 real class gentleman. act. Yes, sir. Class. Guys, yeah. this is a great event. We're excited that we can uh, tell people about it, and and hopefully, ne- that you know, we know the powers that be listen to to our show. Maybe next year you let them let the fans stick around. <laughs> right? Got it. I'd love got it. it. See? All so right. we'll work with you. We'll Guys, work with con- you continued success yeah, to stuff. excellence. Thank you for what you do Thanks and for having making us. a difference in others' lives. As trying to play sports, I think it's really wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks Thank for you. Having us. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Now, that's great stuff from Snyder Hockey. Really, really good stuff that they're doing. All right, I'm going to slide over so Russ can get back into his seat. All right, I'm going to keep talking just for a second while they get out of here. All right, well, all right. Russ, I'm moving. Okay. Yeah. If anybody ever I'm over here now. All right. I, so we're actually talking. Oh, wow, well, that's great. Yeah, whether it's Crouch we are. Or, yeah. Or These are Sox, but yeah, yeah. We have information. We have another guest. We have another guest. Right. Yeah, that's another guest. That's fantastic. I have a great recovery story. I still uh, have people. Do I know who this guest is? It wasn't for me. So I might know who this guest is. I'll keep you in mind. I'll hit you I can't hear you until you're talking to the microphone. I'm talking into the mic now. Okay. He said to the person who told us that there was another person heading over. Now there he is. Right on cue. It's time. Oh, here he comes. I told you. I said I said there was a special uh, we got, guest we got, coming. We got one more, Bundy. So we have a special guest coming on oh, because yeah. I've been teasing oh, in yeah. a, you know, that there's an announcement, and Ant keeps getting himself all worked up. He's, he sh- he's shaking hands. You know what I love, though? He's shaking hands and kissing babies right now. I actually, I did I did text this gentleman, Yeah, he's and coming. I wasn't sure. Look, look, look. So we're bringing somebody on because Ant (laughs) Ant has spent so much time complaining. Hey, Russ. Hello. They told me to sit up straight. Oh, is that, is that, oh is that, was that the big the big thing? I he has like to. This. Maggie, he's got to sit up sure, straight. Put that's, this on that's, the, yeah. that's the most important thing, right? Okay. Just I don't know there. if you saw it uh, last weekend there, Dan. I don't know if you're a, a wrestling fan, but like last week was WrestleMania. Oh, I know. And so there are people going, "Is that is that Dan Hilferty's music?" <laughs> you know, like little Jim Ross, you know, the glass shatters, and here he is, you know. So. Uh, yeah. It's great, great. What what an what an event you had today with the whole thing with Wayne Simmons. Really, really great stuff. You know, Anthony, it's for me as a fan. I was a fan for all those years, and uh, every game he showed up and yep. played so hard. And yep. I think he had 800 penalty minutes, close to 600 games. He scored a lot of goals, and he's a true flyer. And for him to retire as a flyer, I think means so much to yeah. all of us. Oh, yeah. and it's it's really cool that you guys are able to bring him back like that. And you know, we were we were joking earlier because he said that you know we we're Bundy asked us, well, you know, what's in your post hockey life? What do you want to do? He's like, well, maybe I can work here. And I said to you, I looked right into the camera and I said to you and Jonesy, I said, get that man a job. You know what I told him? They gave me a job. They should have no problem giving you one. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. Bundy. No, you know what, Anthony? The truth of the matter is, he's the kind of guy we would like to have yes. as part of this organization. For sure. Yeah. And I just think, stay tuned. Yeah, I think that ah. stay tuned is a good thing. That's a that's a really good thing. He'll, but the the, well, the, 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 cool. the real reason you're There's here. Another reason. Yeah, I, I'm gonna throw this to Russ because this is like Russ's big this thing. This is his no. thing. Yeah. He's, no, he's been sitting there. This is my thing. Yeah, this is you. You you wanted Aunt, Dan. Ant has Ant has spent like a week or two saying, "Oh, it might be an announcement coming. There might be an announcement coming." Well, the announcement's coming. Well, we you know we we've, we've spent the year working together. We've spent the year up here, press row show, and as you're well aware. We were working on a one-year deal, and, and part of that was, let's see how things go. Let's see how the fans react. I would like to think that it's been positive, but I wanted to, to so, throw to you, like, you yeah. know, we do a little dance here. Let's, let's how, do, how you let's, feeling? Let's do a little dance. Let's, <laughs> let's, start, let's start by talking about this first year. And, and in all seriousness, you guys, one of, the things I, one of the things I think we were worried about collectively was would, your independent, would people question your independence? And I think if you look at the body of work throughout the year, the answer is absolutely no. Uh, <laughs> and, and no, no, and, and I mean that in the most positive yeah, way. Yeah, I got you. So we're thrilled to announce, let's stop the dance right now, that we've extended for another year and we'll continue to have Snow the Gully uh, right here telling the truth 
uh, sure, at being encouraged when the team does well, but at the end of the day, telling the truth. And that's that's what we're all trying to do as part of this uh, great, great I, franchise. I know we just wanted you just for a couple minutes, but thank you so much for this opportunity. I know we had you last summer. This has been a godsend in terms of looking back at the year, the fans, the build-up again of this team. I know, forget the, what happened before the Ranger game, but I think from all of us, Dan, and the fans that have come up here, there's been a, a complete culture change. And... There's a handful of people to thank, and you're one of them. This is a different building than it was last April, and it's because of you, Jonesy, and Danny. And we wow. thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to be up here. And I tell you what, we've created a whole fan base ourselves up here that are Flyers fans, and I think it's integral for this for this organization. I, I've loved it. It's been different, but incredible for us well, all. Thank you. Chris, first of all, we're here we are, second to last game of the year, 16,000 plus yep. in the building, a sliver of hope to make the playoffs. Hey, look, as a fan, I was upset. I've been upset over the past couple of weeks, but the truth of the matter is I went on the last road trip. These guys care. Yeah. Tortorella cares. We got something that is, it's, it's germinating, it's growing. And I just think if we stay the course, let Danny and Jonesy and Torts do what they need to do, we're gonna have a lot of fun years here. Uh, uh, hopefully with you guys sitting up here doing your thing. But let's take it one year at a time. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. Hey, it's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing what the next year has uh, in store. And We've got some ideas. We'll chat at some point. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do the tailgate exciting. next year early, by the way. I love in it. In case you knew I that. Yeah. It. Yeah. 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 It was just too hard after the carnival and, and the schedule coming down the stretch. What, yeah. what better way to set the table for next season than by having a bunch of crazy lunatics that tune into the Press Row Show every home game? Yeah. Get them all together. We'll have a blast to start <laughs> the, uh, have a the next season. Well, let, let me say this. I, I want to set the record straight or make sure it's very clear. There will be, there will be no changes in terms of leadership our president Keith Jones is here to stay Danny Breer here to stay and regardless of what people are saying coach Tortorella will be behind that bench and I could not be more excited about it so that's awesome that's there a firm comment I love, love it go. love it yeah. love it love it well thanks Dan we really right, appreciate yeah. you taking the time there we go. thank you thanks Dan. for stopping Dan, by yeah, yeah, cool. we didn't get in any trouble but I know we're not so I don't think I don't think I don't <laughs> think there's any it's the last hey. time they ever send him to snow to goalie again when there's a big break <laughs> <laughs> Dan Hilferty, thank boss. you very much. Good stuff. Good stuff. So there we go. There's the announcement. The announcement is now is is now out of the way. We can confirm. Dan Hilferty's there to confirm another year of Snow the Goalie, another year of the Press Row Show. And um, listen, we couldn't do it without all of you and without all of your support. All right, we're just a a bunch of goofs who decide to come down here for every home game and chat it up and talk some puck, sign some autographs, especially in the case of Bundy. But hell, they've even had intern Andrew signing autographs and signing yeah. shirts all year, okay? So we can't do this without you, and I am really excited. The tailgate is the thing that we wanted to do early this year. Yeah. We were then going to try to do it. I, I think the date was going to be today. And ultimately, we said there are so many people that support this show who are not only local to Philly, but are from out of state. We have plenty of people who check in from Europe and people who check in from Canada who said, if you can give us enough notice, we're going to come in and we want to be part of the tailgate. We want to get to, to enjoy a show together. So we're going to do it at the start of next season. Yep. And I think it's going to be a really great time. And uh, that'll kind of get things going for another season. This season is not over yet, but it has been a big one. It's been a successful one. We have some ideas of how to make this thing even bigger. Yeah. And, and like I said there, I think we'll, we'll have a chat with the, the powers that be. But there, there's a lot to build on here. And I, listen, I'll eventually have my moment. You guys know me. I'm a chihuahua. I'm very well known as being a chihuahua <laughs> and nipping. But all those people, all those jackasses, I can't use stronger words right now because of the Press Row Show. All those people who decided to say over the last couple of months that this was going to be over, that the team hated us, yada, yada, your sister's keister. Sucks to suck. And we, well, we just don't suck. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what, welcome though? in to the only Flyers podcast. And we do love our fans. And it is yeah. the fans. At the end of the day, it's the fans that make us tick. Yes. Because yeah, it, it, it is. You know, we, we love Hillfleet. He comes on. He gave us this opportunity. And yep. Jonesy loves us. I played with him. So there's there's that, that family atmosphere to it. But really, what, what binds us all is the fans. 100%. And, and that, that, is, that never gets lost on anybody. This show is for you. And it's by you. And that's what the best about it is. We're just the messengers. Um, and we do have some hockey messaging to do because we haven't talked about it. Well, really quick. By the way, 
we are always open to, to feedback too. I know that we get yeah. a lot of feedback in the comments on YouTube. We sometimes get it through email, snowthegoalie at gmail.com. We sometimes get it in Facebook messages and Instagram DMs and Twitter DMs. But by all means, if you have an idea out there and you want to see us expand coverage, you want to see us do something different that is going to make this show better, whether it's Press Row Show, regular Snow the Goalie. Going out on by a all night, means. Like, a, like a restaurant evening? Yeah, like, like, I, like I, a there, game, there are show? so many great opportunities. And by the way, if you own a, a business that's local to the area, we drew a crowd of, what was it, 80 people or whatever out to Oxford, Pennsylvania, and we love Oxford. But everybody who was there except for one guy was like, I drove an hour just was, to come sit like and hang out for the, Florida. for the press road show. <laughs> so if you so, own a business locally so you and you're going to draw so, a nice big crowd, you get in touch so with So you us. mean suggest, you, you want fans to make suggestions, right? I do. So like like the guy who constantly DMs me and thinks that we should kick you off the show. Well, he can he can pound sand. <laughs> I do love that, how you get, like, you know, something like once in a while is a troll. Yeah. <laughs> he just buries you. He sends me that <laughs> constantly, yeah. and he hates Russ. He That's hates okay. Russ. He loves me and Bundy. Hates Russ. It's all good, man. Whatever. Here's, oh, there you go. As usual, very, very arrogant, says Pino. I don't know what, what was what was arrogant, because I said the Only Flyers podcast, and some people still don't get the joke. Oh, uh, it's all Is that what it's it was? Good. It's all good. Anyway, listen. We all have to, this is the, the good thing, and I will say this from our, from our days, and you still write for Crossing Broad, and I write for the parent company, but we, we've been hardened by the comment section that used to exist on that site. <laughs> Bundy has been hardened by his, his years as a player. Yes. There aren't a whole lot of things you guys can say or that just trolls that, can pal. say <laughs> to piss us off nope. or really get under our skin. It takes a lot. If you do, kudos to you. But um, anyway, this game. I used to like Greg Mack. Why? What happened with Greg Mack? He oh, called you his favorite. Greg, you're a sweetheart and, and a great man. Uh, <laughs> all, all of these wonderful things out of the way. Let's get back. We have a minute until the, yeah, the, until no, the game. Nothing happened seems, in the first period. I would say that the, th the only thing worth talking about is the fact that the power play failed again, especially with a one-minute five-on-three opportunity where they just didn't generate Dude, any chances. You could have yeah. put five chihuahuas on the ice. <laughs> And it would have been a better power play than that thing that we saw in the first. That was the that, worst I think I've ever seen. That like, it looked like nobody knew what they wanted to do with the puck. Yeah, it was at all. It, it was, was so bad. It was unreal. And that's the thing, you know, it's funny. We were, we were saying, in a five on three, the, the, it's pass the puck to the point where you're pulling them out of their spots yeah. so that you have open shots, open lanes. They were skating in circles with the puck. They weren't even passing it to and each other. It, and the Devils are just standing there like, go ahead. It was dog nasty. It was <laughs> just well, bad. It was so bad, dude. Like it was unbelievable. And we'll we'll talk about that more. I in don't the have second time for a story. Can you actually remind me about Roger Nielsen's dog? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank Roger you. Nielsen's dog. Somebody put it in the comments in and, there. and remind Thanks. us. Allison, you're you're, you're in, in charge. charge. Allison is really the brains of the show, in the comments section. So all right, we'll be back. Second intermission. Talk to you soon.
Welcome back into the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame intermission and postgame show this side of the Mississippi, south of the Arctic Circle, north of the equator, and above sea level. Second period. I just want to say bye to my daughter. What? She's going to leave, she said. She's leaving. Why? You know, Ava's leaving? Be- over here. Why? Because the, the come game, on, the come game on. was so boring that she she's bored to tears. This, this is my 22-year-old basketball. 23. 23, I forgot. So how, and, and we're going to have, I just wanted to introduce her because I do tell people about her. Came to the Flyers game today, and now she wants to leave. How come? Hey. Uh, there's a lot of traffic <laughs> from I, the Phillies a, game. <laughs> oh, you want to beat the traffic from the Phillies game, right? Well, I got to tell you, Ava, I watched more uh, Patriot League bas- women's <laughs> basketball today. And I went to a Patriot League school. I went to American University. Yeah. I watched more Patriot League basketball this season, thanks to your dad, than I've ever watched. And when I was at the school, I used to work on the event staff at American University for women's basketball games. And, and she's looking for a job, and I know Russ needs a babysitter, so if you're yeah. out this summer. <laughs> basketball, she's your time. Hey, Ava, you can leave now to beat the Phillies traffic. All right. <laughs> coming, sweetie. Love you. There we go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, My favorite thing is whenever there's somebody next to you, Bundy, Ant has this propensity. He leans, and he's got a massive dome. Yeah, no, it's it's fine, though. But, you know, the kids, like, feel like they know Anthony, right? Because yeah. they watch the yeah. show, so they know yeah. you, too, Russ. That's all right. It's great. You know what? It's nice to see that one of the people that Bundy has talked so much about on this show was here and is now... Failing to beat the traffic. What? Allison just said, here's your reminder, Bundy. Roger Nielsen's dog. All right, let's go there real quick. All right, so <laughs> Roger Nielsen, Jody Hall was in New York. This is a truth. Like, this is okay. unbelievable. And, Ro- bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Roger Nielsen had this dog named Mike. Okay. Wait, his dog was named Mike? Yeah, Mike. Mike. Mike the dog. Okay. So what happened was is the guys couldn't figure out how to, like, forecheck. So Roger says... Gets them all in a line in a semicircle around the hash marks. And he goes, you know, like, you guys put the puck in there. It goes in the corner. He goes, I don't know why a guy doesn't come around and, like, pick it up this side. You know, we talk like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I, I just don't get it. He goes, so watch me here. I'm going to show you something. He goes, because Mike, Mike's going to show you how to forecheck. Roger pushes the puck into the corner, right? And Mike goes and chases it behind the net. He's like, no, no, Mike. Mike, go right to the puck. So he puts it in the other corner. Mike goes and forechecks the puck. Wait, and so he like, put the dog on the ice in New York? Yeah, I basically say, you guys are too stupid. I'm going to have my dog do it. He'll show you how to do it. <laughs> and the dog chased the puck. Yeah, Mike actually knew where to go get the puck. He forechecked <laughs> the puck. Good job, Mike. What a good boy. <laughs> Imagine that's, that. That's fit. That's, if, that's not, if that's not emasculating to a player. Imagine you sitting there like, okay, everybody get on a half circle. And then you bring your dog out, and he's a better <laughs> forechecker than two lines on your team. <laughs> Oh, the good old days. We're having, we're having quite the a good day. old days. We're having quite a day. Hey, good period for the Flyers. You give them credit. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you had one nothing after two periods. Yeah. I, I completely uh, thought this game would be a much more wide open game, and it's not been. It's been a much more, a lot of, not a lot of room out there. Yeah. Um, Flyers had a few chances, but nothing fantastic. I, I don't feel like the Devils have had really much in the way of chances at all. No, I, second period. What are the fans. shots? I don't even know what the shots were, but they only got 10 or 11, something like that total for the game so far. They had like five in the first four minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just crazy, right? I mean, I, and then, of course, the power kill scores again, 16th shorthand, uh, shorthanded goal of the season for the Flyers. Travis Konechny gets it. That's his 400th career point in the NHL. So nice. uh, good stuff. Good, for, just good stuff for TK. Yeah, one nothing. And, uh, yeah, you look, 20 minutes of, of good defensive hockey, Bundy, and they're still alive. They are. Uh, other games are going on, but the Flyers can't worry about that. I, pre- I prefer them to win this in regulation in case it comes down to any kind of goofy number. Yeah, the, the tiebreaker the game. Yeah, the yeah. regulation wins, right, for uh, tiebreaker purposes. And that actually becomes a factor, too, winning this in regulation rather than overtime. Yep. Do you, do you, do you guys hear that? Silence? No, no, no. You have to take a headphone out. It's time! For intern Andrew trivia time. Da, 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 da. We got the concerned fan is here. Oh, we'll do the concerned yeah. fan too. We'll we'll do the trivia and let's then we'll go, do the concerned let's fan. Let's go over to trivia time. I thought you legitimately Andrew. heard something because when uh, we had the guys from Snyder Hockey on, 
you guys couldn't see it. There was a bird flying around behind you. Actually, we, we I think we got it on camera at one point. So I was like, did you did you hear them like catch the bird or something? Yeah, we got to check yeah. that out. We got to check that out. I'm gonna go I back and look at that. I did see security scramble at one point. We're gonna talk to the security people on the show. Yeah, probably we're, on Tuesday. Tuesday night, we I, I made a promise. The I promised them all year all long year. that we will bring the security guys on oh, yeah. for the last and game ladies. on Tuesday. I don't. Um, yes. Well, if they're here. Wow. The, the, regu wow. the regulars wow. that are here. The regulars that are here. She's are always four here. guys. The, the, no, but at the end of the night. Okay, that's different. Yeah. But she's here at the start. You know. All right. You know. You think. You she think, might have opinions on hockey. You don't you know. Think, you think that things are going well. The Flyers announced that they're partnering with us for another year, and then Ant goes and says something like, "You know, it's a shit. We maybe we should just we should send him off the next time there's a guest on." Anyway. That's right. Go ahead, intern, intern Andrew. Andrew. Trivia time. So obviously the Flyers and the Devils have a ton of history, and even just since I've been a fan of hockey, have met each other in the playoffs twice in 2010 and 2012, <laughs> and I was struggling to come up with a question that wasn't going to be glaringly obvious, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to pivot. And the night belongs to him, and he graced us with his presence earlier, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a Wayne Simmons question. There instead. you go. Oh, okay. Good. That's good stuff. So, February 6th, 2016, the Flyers are here against the Rangers. This is a game that the Rangers uh, would eventually win 3-2 to two in a shootout, and Simmons got tossed from the game in the first period because he caught the then Rangers captain, Ryan McDonough, with a left hook, concussed him, uh, and he, uh, McDonough missed a lot of time for that. Uh, One punch, if I remember. Yeah. Nobody talks about the fact that McDonough, you know, cross-checked him in the head, but that's really okay. I've gotten over it. Uh, anyways, <laughs> similar... <laughs> so... Similar to the Flyer Senators thing in 2004, they met each other again eight days later, this time at the Garden. And obviously the entire build-up to that was Simmons is going to he's gonna have to answer for what he did. So there was a lot of talking in the media leading up to that game, and they were showing him jawing off with people in uh, warm-ups. And wouldn't you know it, uh, 39 seconds into the game, he dropped the gloves. And in my opinion beat the brakes off of this guy but i i mean i don't i'm not a professional boxing judge or whatever so that's just my opinion who was the guy that simmons fought was it ryan callahan no i don't think he was on the rangers at that point he might have been in tampa by then what year was it 2016. Hmm. think about that for a couple seconds here 2016 would have been at the beginning of the game right who would they have had that was tough was it, was, just... was it a tough guy? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he was, yeah. Known for fighting? I would say he was known for this fight because he his time in the NHL, I, I would say, was fleeting. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's a clue. Wow. No one in the chat either. That's a tough. That's a tough question. So he just had a cup of coffee at the NHL. Uh, I'll pull up his exact years, but it, it was not long. Okay. I, 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 truth be told, I had never even heard of him before this. Oh, you know what? Was it McElrath? McEl McElrath? Mc Get out! Was it really? Yeah, so I'll tell you I why. was going to go. I was going to go with Dylan McElrath. Dylan McElrath never is looked, correct. Never looked. Yeah, no you reason. didn't. And I remember because he was a big buck, and I saw him down in Hershey a couple years ago. I went and spoke. The team. This guy's massive, and and he could fight. And I remember Simmons absolutely tuned him up. I do remember that now. It was like, all right, you get a fight, send them out, let's get it over with and get it done. That's exactly what happened. Steel trap. I said it, I said it in the interview. Your mind is like a steel trap. It's got crazy. I would never have pulled that one out. Yeah, Dylan McElroy. I was I was Bundy stuck. Has I, you know what? Bundy doesn't look at the comments. I was stuck on Devils guys. That's how that's how my mind was so uh, that's yeah, I, I I did switch it up on you. Yeah. Normally it's it, it would be based on who they're playing. Yeah. Yeah. So the the other interesting thing about this game was um, the Rangers were winning three to nothing late in the game, and Shen scored a goal in the final minute, meaningless goal except for Gostisbehere got an assist, so that extended that point streak that he had. Oh wow! To yeah. twelve games it ended up being a fifteen game point streak, which still stands as the NHL record yeah. among rookie defensemen. Yeah. Wow. How about that? That that's good stuff. Good question. Really good, good question. Job. Good question, and Bundy, great answer. I yep. all I would have I would have sat here all day. I never would have gotten Dylan McElrath. Yep. The names I was thinking of were Pierre Luc LeBlond. Remember him from the Devils? Oh yeah. And um, a, a guy named Devoe who was a fighter. D e v a u x. Well, that was the funny thing. I said he <laughs> lost a me. fight to somebody on the Flyers once, and I remember writing the line. That uh, that I think I and I want to say, 
that the fight was Riley Cote. I could be wrong. But I, I, I think, I, and the way I wrote it was, Cote hit DeVoe so hard that Bell and Biv felt it. <laughs> that was the line that I wrote for that story. So Russ would have appreciated that. Yeah. No? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know who Bell Biv DeVoe is? Uh, I don't know. Who Let's bring on the concerned fan. Andrew doesn't either. Yeah, it's like Andrew just saying, like, the one thing that made me laugh, though, with Andrew's like, yeah, we had story rivalries, like history with the, flat, with the Devils. He had no idea about the 90s. So. Oh, my God. The 90s was <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. That's what, like, I was, if I wasn't there, then I'm going to have a hard time writing a trivia question about it. We've been most watching of, hockey since you were in diapers, yeah, kid. Most of, you know, I mean, most, if not all, of the trivia questions this year have been based on, like, things that I remember. So. Yes. Yes. They, they have. see bias. It's good. I like it. Yeah, it it's like all I always we say, anything before it. 1990 never happened. No, it didn't. I yeah. mean, I wasn't there, so I can't know for sure. That's exactly right. This could all be a simulation. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> this is a simulation. That's 100% true. Absolutely. Right. Come on over. Concerned fan. Oh, we're bringing on concerned fan. Concerned fan flyers what, there. What a day we've had here on the Press Row Show. Let's, let's go over there. There we go. How concerned are you? Uh, for today's game, it's out of... Six. You still have a six concern, huh? Yeah, yeah. And now is that a concern for the game or is that a concern for, for today's game? Just for, for the game. The playoffs, it's an eight. Yeah, that's about right. That's about uh, right. You ready for my impression of Dusty Rhodes? Yes. No, you're going to do a Dusty oh. oh, Russ, a Dusty okay. Rhodes impression. I love this. Let's go. Lies being going through some hard times. What you know about hard times, Russ? Bundy ain't lies hard times. You know, not too long ago, they were funky like a monkey, daddy. That's <laughs> solid, man. That's a great impression. I wish that I could do impression. Stuff. The S's were a little bit too perfect, but yes, it was good. That was yeah, very good. that's good. A very that good, Dusty. Are you, are you happy his son is the champion now? Yes. Did you go to WrestleMania last weekend? Oh, you missed out. It was expensive. I went on night one. It was a good time. It was a good time. Gonna close this out here, right, Eric, and then move on to the next game. That's all you can do, right? Are you gonna be here on Tuesday? All right, so the concerned fan there. will be back yeah, here on well, Tuesday, and really, that's what it's all there. about. Thank yeah. you again, concerned fan. Good stuff, concerned fan. Concerned Flyers, fan. Eric. Um, so uh, just another segment that grew organically out of this show. Yeah, this year. It doesn't always have we to be so him. Many. He was the pioneer, and it's just become him. It is, and then he, so he comes seconds. up every day. I can't, I can't send her. What am I gonna do? Say no, right? Hey, come on, on, man. We love him. Yeah, it's good. Oh, Brandon Ficarra with a great idea. I think we need to color the head tattoos based on concern level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Eric would love that. Up here with like expo markers, you know? <laughs> and then we you wipe, have, like, them, we wipe like, them down in between periods. You know, you have like people that come to like shows like the clowns and all that. They paint faces. You could actually have Eric up here for our carnival and they can come and paint his head. Yeah. Oh, it's a great idea. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Oh, that's great. Um... Is it time Podcast for your? Up. Is it time for your question, Russ? No, it's oh, not. Not time yet. It's not. It's not time. It's too premature. Not a little early. We got four and a, four and a half minutes. Uh, you know. Fine, I'll ask it, Ant. I had a joke to make, but this go is ahead, the, make your joke. I can't. It's the press row show. Ah. Um, uh. There was a joke to be made, and we're gonna hold off. Bundy. Given the fact that through two periods, yep. the Flyers are up one nothing in a must-win game. Yep. If they want to make the playoffs. The Devils only have 11 shots on goal. Yep. How important are the first five minutes specifically for Sam Arison, who hasn't had a lot of work today? Yeah, I think the Flyers have done a good job not turning this into a track meet. And I think that was important because the Devils, being where they are, they're eliminated already. They're gonna, they wanted to probably play a game that was easy and, and get no, you know, no injuries. Uh, so I think that the Flyers have done a good job of, of clamping that up and not getting... Uh, into that style of game. That being said, they only have a one goal lead. That doesn't mean they need to start forcing it or pushing the, the envelope. But I do think that they need to continue playing in the, the Jersey, uh, New Jersey zone. And they can do that. They've done that in this game. They need to continue on and get more traffic, more shots up. In, in a one goal game, Bundy, when, when does it get to the point where you start to play with a more of a defensive mindset? At what point in the period, in the third period, in a one goal game? Probably about seven or eight minute mark. Where you're going to tell your D no pinching unless you're absolutely sure. Yeah. Uh, and it also goes with how you know how the pace of that game's going of, of the period's going to. But generally, it's about that time. It's usually when you say, "Okay, guys, no more risk," especially one nothing. 
Yeah. Now, it's a huge difference between 2 nothing. If you think you can keep a puck in to kill extra time off the clock, you'll do it. But if you're not 100% sure, that's what changes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I mean, I, the game is the exact opposite of what I thought it was going to be today. Yeah. He's, yeah, guys. Same here. Well, it's the, you, Bundy, you said pregame, pond hockey. You can't let it become a pond hockey game. But I still thought there'd be more goals. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that Devils got in now. I mean, it's. Yeah, he, that's that was what that was what I based my prediction of Flyers scoring five goals on. Yeah. Because their goaltender is is awful. Yeah, it's been a struggle. Kind of, kind of shocking for you to pick five goals in. You know, hockey teams don't really score five goals. No, 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 no. It's six, Russ. Six. You can't say they say six. Okay. Six is uh-huh. where you're going ridiculous. That's where you're going too far off the board. So five I've done a few times this year. Now, if this holds, I mean, we're not getting a 5-2. No, it, 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 assuming the third period there, stays about the way the first two periods have gone, we're all going to get a point, and it's going to come down to the last game. Which would be a really fun. And we're going to end up being tied, aren't we? Well, it all depends. I mean, because it's possible that we could pick different teams, and then there could be a perfect score, and that could, well, no, yeah, that, perfect score. But what I would love to see happen, honestly, is we get, we get to Tuesday, and at the end of that game, we're in a three-way tie, and it comes down to who had the most perfect scores. Is that oh, wait, wait. When was what? that set? Well, I don't know. What else is our tiebreaker? There is no tiebreaker. There has to be a tiebreaker. All right. The number of times that you no. didn't, the number of times that you picked the Flyers to win and they won. No. That should be the tiebreaker. No, because it's all about. You know why? Why? Because you probably didn't pick the Flyers enough. <laughs> I do think we we have to brainstorm a way to have a tiebreaker in the in the unlikely event we have a three way tie on Tuesday. Yeah. I. I you know, whatever. I don't know. What if because um, we, a tie's a tie? This is a three-way tie. What if I give you guys press row show trivia? Ooh. Wait, about the show? So I, I I haven't told you two this yet. I told Russ probably a month or so ago. I'm in the process of going back and rewatching all of our old episodes, and I'm gonna make a best of compilation that we can put out at the end of the year. I love it. So wait, I've wait got a, a lot of notes. I wait love it. Wait a second. It. Have you been commenting on the videos? Have I been caught? Co- no. Who is the guy? Na- you know, you know. I flagged th- how there's that guy named Christian on YouTube. He's been commenting on old episodes of the show, and he like writes a one sentence or two sentence like synopsis of something that came up in the show. And I don't know why. So it's not you. No. I, so there's somebody I else who's like doing who's like doing research on the show. I don't know how to feel. It's slightly disconcerting. You know, it's not disconcerting. Can we have that- a moment of silence for OJ yet? <laughs> and on that, it's time for us to head out. We'll talk to all of you post game here. On we should have asked. We should have asked Hitch to do the eulogy for yeah. for OJ.
ladies and gentlemen, they ain't dead yet. Nope. The Philadelphia Flyers. Was this a great game? No. Was it an exciting game? Not particularly. <laughs> but it's still a game that the Flyers win. They are still actively alive with potential playoff hopes. They're going to need some help. But guys, they did something they needed to do, and they picked up the two points. Yeah, and they got it in regulation, which, you know, if it does come down to those regulation and overtime wins, that'll be really, really important for the team. So uh, that was a good one to, to get uh, to get that in, in regulation. Um, again, there's nothing you can do about the other games. I know people are excited that, uh, you know, Toronto's up on Detroit. And that's early. It's one it, nothing, it, it and, is. and Tampa and Washington's two two in the third. Yeah, and then you got you know you got the Penguins coming. There's nothing you can do about those games except enjoy them just for the hockey. But this was a great step by the Flyers again. And listen, you thought they're down and out. They end up winning another division game against the Devils team that looked disinterested. They didn't put a real heavy press on until the end, and even then they didn't get much for it. So good win, uh, a much needed win if you want to get to where you got to go to. And Urson amazingly. Uh, with one goal against in the last two games. He's yeah, I back. Mean, He's back. I, I, the number one goalie's back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it all makes a difference when your goalie's playing well. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think it was that big of a of an effort by Erson. I think he had a couple of really nice saves in the game. Uh, but for the most part, the Flyers did something tonight that they haven't done in a while. Blocked a ton of shots. Yeah, they did. They really did. Right? They got in the way. And, and that's the thing. Got sticks on pucks. Like, you know, the Devils didn't have a lot. They, they really didn't. They didn't have a lot of opportunities. They had a few, but not many. And that was that they limited the chances. And when Urson needed to make a save, he did. But yep. I think with the Devils only finished with, what, like 18, 19 shots, something in that range, maybe 20. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was a solid effort by the Flyers defensively in their end. See you, guys. Do we have confirmation here, by the way? Andrew Jacobson says over in the chat, weird. Coots second with 25 shifts tonight, and we win. Led in shifts last game, and we won. I'll check that to make sure that that's accurate. Um, but I don't would know we, why you would, would be would wrong. We, would we just throw random things up on the screen without verifying them ourselves first? Not us. No. Not us. I mean, I, I didn't notice that, but, I mean, I think it's possible. Uh, Hathaway had 26 shifts. So right. did Palin. No, he said, he said 20, 25 was second most. Oh, second most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, but it's ice time. You can look at the shift totals, but the, it's more you got to look at the ice time. You had seventeen twenty six, which is not a ton, um, but they were look pretty balanced. I mean, Konechny led all uh, all forwards at twenty one forty eight, Paling twenty oh three, and then Forster eighteen fifty two. So Couturier was fourth among forwards. So he certainly got more time than you yeah. would think. But um, yeah, Sanheim and York. Uh, 25 minutes each. Um, 3, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22 block shots. That's a lot. 22. You they, said they had been averaging during that eight-game losing streak around 14. So there it goes. It just shows the difference, right? Sometimes if you give that little bit extra there in your own end, it can make a difference. Big time when you block that many shots and you get in the way. They blocked a lot down the stretch, too. Yeah, that makes a big difference, you know, that stuff you don't – and they cleaned up the crease, too, pretty well tonight. Like, there wasn't a lot of second-chance ch opportunities. Um, you know, Devils missing Hughes. Uh, obviously, you get a guy like that in there, he changes the dynamic on the power play. Uh, but the Flyers did a good job in this hockey game, and I think that they, you know, they, they deserve most of the credit for the effort and the, and the win here tonight. It wasn't like the other team lost it. The Flyers went out and earned it and then kept them off the score sheet. Uh, hey, by the way, somebody asked – I think it was timeout – asked uh, – over in the comments, said something to the effect of, can we get the, the triple tonight? Phillies won, Flyers won, Denver can knock out Quitter Gauthier. Massimo Rizzo expected to be in the lineup. Flyers prospect, Massimo Rizzo. I think it's 2 nothing Denver at the, current, at the current time. So, so there you go. Yeah. They go bango bongo, so baby. Somebody's root, oh, they're rooting for against Cutter. Rizzo oh, against yeah. Quitter. Okay. So how about that? Yeah, interesting. Interesting. That would be, that would is this be what you guys do up here in the post game? This is uh, only the second post game I've been up here for. This is what we, we just kind of jab well, it's, around. It's usually yeah. a lot of fun. We you wait, know, we're, we we're wait usually... for you to not get answered, and then we <laughs> like we sit around and uh, kind of like huff, huff and puff a little bit, and then uh, we talk about how great it was, and um, 
Then yeah, we, no, then we go. <laughs> yeah, the only the only reason I'm not down is we we both have Bundy and I have a an, an early out uh, tonight. We have to get out of here. Yeah. Um, that's the only reason I stayed up here for this. But um, yeah, this is interesting. This is this is a different feel. It doesn't have that same feeling as like the early part of the game. It, it goes from being loud to being quiet. I'm used to going from quiet to loud. Yeah. Right, and you kind of have that energy that kind of builds up. Yep. A and here it's kind of like. It's like the deflating balloon a little bit. Is this your crew, Russ? This is this is part of my crew over here. Dude's wearing a snow the goalie shirt. I love it. Snow the goalie shirt. Yeah, this is good stuff. So these are all your boys from where? From college, from uh, Westchester. Westchester. The best Chester. Nice. Yeah. Nice. How many, how many the, one, the, one guy, the one guy over there uh, is wearing. He's got like a uh, a flannel on, but yeah, underneath yeah. he's got like the the sleeves are cut off, and I. Because he was going to, like, I guess, flash on the camera a little bit, flash out the, the biceps, get the pecs out. But I was like, you got to be careful. I'm like, I can't bring you on the press row show and then have some nip flash, you know. It's, <laughs> you can't free the nip on, on the press row show. <laughs> you can say that. It's, uh, it's good. I'm just saying. He's got, like, it's, it's, it's a very – Well, I want to know. He's so, a buff dude. So you have one friend who wore a Snow the Goalie shirt. Yeah. I want to know why the rest of them did. That's a great question. I don't know. They're not, maybe they're not. Maybe they're not as good friends as you think. Friendships are being questioned in in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Loyalty. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Hustle, loyalty, and respect, John Cena. Anyway. Well, look, I just, I'm just. Intern Andrew got that one. I, I'll, I'll say this. What? I, unless Pittsburgh wins their next two games, Tuesday's game will have meaning. Yes. So. You know, obviously, you got to wait and see what happens. But as long, well, as long as they don't get three points in their next two games, Tuesday's game against Washington will have meaning for the Flyers. Penguins play the Bruins tonight. Bru Bruins tonight. Nashville on Monday night. Right. And then they're at the, the Islanders, Islanders on. Oh. on so it's it's back to back yeah. home games, but then they're on the island for the last for game. The last game. Which again, if the I Islanders will probably, I don't think they're going to play anybody that game. Can I ask though, Bundy, like? If if the Islanders are solidly in and they have nothing to play for on Wednesday night, is there a possibility that because they're playing at home, it could affect how many guys they would sit out? Well, like they can't sit out that many guys. But I'm just like I mean, you even, if, even if they'd sit some of their best, like because it's the last home game of the regular season in front of their home crowd, is there a chance that that has any impact on who they might sit? Well, I mean, you're going to look at your skill guys. Yeah, said, Barzal. Barzal and uh, uh, Horvat, yeah. uh, maybe a defenseman that's given a lot. Pel play your Pelic and, and Pulock, right? Yeah, and then you'll you'll um, start the yeah, backup maybe, goalie. Maybe Brock Nelson or some one of those guys too, or sit. But that's just gives just gives them a night off. Uh, um, have they been afforded that yet? No, they've no. they've not clinched it yet. They 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 they're very close. But they, they can with a, like a loss for someone else. Uh, uh, there's a good chance. Well, f there's a good chance that they will be locked into the number three spot. By, by the time that game rolls around, and that's what I was saying to Russ off air, is that if that's the case, I, I don't think that they play every everybody against the Penguins. I just think that they th they look at it and say, why risk our best players getting hurt in a game Have that a doesn't one. mean anything that's for them? Good. Yeah, and it, right. If they're clinched, and, and you, listen, I mean, if you're you're in that position, you can do what you want. I mean, you're that's the one time if you get a game that you can rest guys at the end of the year before the playoffs, you have absolutely the right to do that. Smart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's so. I mean, look, there's there's some games that are going to have to play out for the Flyers here over the course of the next few days before we can sit there and say that Tuesday's a guaranteed meaningful game. But th there's a good chance of it having some meaning at this point. T Bundy, winning today was made that happen. Bundy, Is there are, a chance that game could mean nothing? Yes. If Pittsburgh wins their next two games, okay, then, then that game, it games means nothing. Bundy, are so. you upset with how buttoned up this uh, post game is compared to what it usually is? Um, no, I mean, I'm, it's I'm all happy. my fault. I'm happy it Anthony's well, here. I, I don't, I don't criticize my teammates, Russ. I do. I know you do. Um, I do. Except when they turn the because you know why. I, I, say, I know why. I criticize myself. I know too. why because what usually happens is, is Andrew and I are downstairs hustling, right, doing our work, and you guys are up here making hustling. fun of us. Hustling. No, because usually we get to interact with the people. Because the people are so vital to the post game, and a lot of the interaction with them is garlic finger camera, right? Potato, Potato cam. cam, yeah, yeah. That's usually what we. And we're not getting, and we're not getting that tonight. Which, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a critical part of post game. Yeah, well, we'll get it on Tuesday. 
We'll, we'll make and, sure it happens on Tuesday. Andrew Fawcett's totally right. I am the locker room cancer. That is 100% true. Uh, Andrew McLaughlin um, sent a super chat with no comment. Andrew, drop another thing in there, and we'll be happy to pull it up on the screen. Yeah, you probably did it by accident. Brandon Ficara says hustling equals smearing the camera with mayonnaise. So Brandon gets it. I can tell you, Brandon, you know who's hu- who hustles the most? It's not me. It's intern Andrew. He does. He, it's intern Andrew he, he because he's got to get all set up. He's got to get, got to get the, his phone hooked into the into the tripod and you know whatever. And my my favorite is when we do the the interview in the locker room with the player because there's so much stuff going on around him, and he just goes, I don't care. I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna get in everybody's way. Like the that's where they shoot the um the NBC Sports post game interview mm-hmm. with the player. So they have the banner there hanging, and they got all their cameras, and they got all their boxes for their equipment. And intern Andrew just goes and sets up, and he's like, he's like the honey badger man. He's like, you don't care, you know. Uh, and then, and then, the press row show. and and then, and then you have also just off to the side, you have the post game radio show with Jason and there's and a radio show. Jason Martinez and Brian Smith, our, they're our our friends and colleagues. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's Bundy, oh, that's right. Bundy oh, does right. the show I with them. Yeah, very, very good guy. They're not yes. like they're not like the Tooth Fairy. No, 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 no they, no. they exist. They, they exist. exist. Um, radio station that they're on might not, but that's beside oh, the point. <laughs> but but Andrew doesn't care about them either. He just sets up like literally, we're four feet behind Martitas. Hold on, I mock the fact that somebody makes hundreds of thousands of dollars to get 150 concurrent viewers on a on their their show, and you you get. A little bit, ooh, like it's, it's a violation. But you say an entire radio station doesn't exist, and that's and we're supposed to just let that slide. It's a double standard. Double what, standard. What's their weekend ratings? Do they do shows on the weekend? Yes. Yeah, they do. I, well, see, I, I think actually you're you're being a little bit ruder, and I hope that the people who host afternoon shows on the station. I like the I people they, who I host their, who you. host shows, but I'm I just asking you. You know what their ratings are? Yeah, I do. Okay. okay. Two nothing Denver. I actually got the game on here. You watching? Yeah, it's 21-12 shots on goal for Denver after two. I like that. Oh, it's two periods. I thought it was only the first. Two periods, yes. And Denver, okay. Denver's 25-1-2 and two when leading after two periods. Wow. How about it? Massimo they got, Rizzo. They got three guys doing hockey now I've never seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a national championship game. I've never seen or heard of one of these analysts. You can't convince me those guys aren't AI-generated. I don't who I, who uh, I don't I don't did, know who they are. Did, you Rizzo, did Rizzo score in that game? I, um, Even if he didn't, he scored in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's man, a that's heck great. of a goal. Well, I mean, it's a, a short side high. So, All yeah. right, let's set the table for what is All to right. come. Flyers end their season on Tuesday, end of the regular season, against the Washington Capitals here at the Wells Fargo Center. Seven o'clock puck drop. Mm-hmm. I want prediction time. We can't be predicting the score now. Hush your face a second. I don't mean the score. Oh. By the time Tuesday rolls around, will the game mean anything? You're asking us to predict scores of other games. I can't predict our own scores most of the time. That's true. And so that's what I'm it saying. It really comes down more to the Pittsburgh because thing. Because like, you don't know what the Flyers' attitude is going to be that night. If it's a meaningful game, I say yes, they beat the Washington Capitals. Well, I don't think he's asking for a prediction. I'm not asking. No, I'm He just saying, wants to know if the game I'm has saying, meaning. I'm saying, will the game have meaning because will Pittsburgh – Crap the bed, or will they put this thing out of reach? I sure hope it has meaning, Russ. Mm-hmm. But I feels like Crosby. I, I don't know. I mean, he's on, he's at a playing at the next next level right now. He's playing at that. You know, he's he's found the fountain. Of, well, he's had a great year. I shouldn't say he's found the fountain of youth this week, right? But um, or these past couple of weeks. But he's really playing at, a, at an elite level that maybe he hasn't played at for you know a, a few years. years. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's I mean, back and got one more run in him. I don't know. I, Pittsburgh doesn't have it to get. Get through. They're not good, no. Yeah. But they might just be experienced enough. Yeah, yeah. To get to to hang on to this again, Did they only need that, three right? points. They, there's a, there's a case there with a guy right where they trade, um, not Connor Sherry, the, uh, Gensel, the, Gensel to, to Carolina. Yeah, they traded Gensel. And you're wondering now, like, what would we do? Man, yeah. without Gensel, they might make it, which yeah. is crazy. But. It is wild. All right, I think that's probably a yep. good place for us to wrap up tonight. A big thank you to everybody who watched live on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen. Um, and a big thank you to everybody who listens in the podcast feed after the fact over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, wherever you get your podcast. Thanks Amazon Wayne, Music as well. Thanks to Wayne Simmons. And big yeah. thank you to Wayne Dan Simmons. Hilfrey, Dan Hilferty. Dan Scott Hilferty. Tharp and his guys from Snyder Hockey, which was yeah. great. Yeah, it's all good I have stuff. a lot of editing to do for the, uh, the post-game show. But, hey, the big news tonight, 
we're back next year. Yes, that's and that, the most important thing. That's a lot of fun. Well, apparently, by the way, just so I can point out, John right. Bannon saying that uh, you talk about the guys that you don't know who they are doing the hockey game there. Apparently, uh, Colby Cohen is between the benches. There you go. Oh, well, I mean, Colby, former, listen, former, you know former, a guy. Former, I, don't don't you know. I, I, I do. I mean, but if I didn't work with Colby here, I never would have known who he was either. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's local. Delco. 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 I used Delco to kid. do post game with him. Yeah. yeah. I don't nice know guy. what he was going to say half the time, but he was a good guy. Yeah, he was a really good guy. Nice guy. Really, he does really, a morning, really guy. Sh- morning show on a daily face-off. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, it's because h- him and Frank are close. Well, you know, there they you go. They grew up together. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. Time for us to roll out. Everybody yeah. have a great rest of your night. If you're finding us on Sunday morning or something, enjoy your Sunday. And we'll talk to all of you on Tuesday here at the Press Row Show. Last opportunity to get out to a Flyers regular season game to come up outside the Snow the Goalie Sportsbook. Talk some puck. Have a blast. We hope we'll see you here. And if we don't, hope that you'll be in the comments section on Tuesday's show. We love you. We'll see you Tuesday. Everybody have a great night. Talk soon. Anything you want to say on, on the way out here, Mr. Uh, you know? No, usually, I, usually you guys are done by the time I get up here. Only a couple times have I come back up with news or with some kind of reaction or something. So, oh, I tell you, this whole thing just feels weird with me being great, here. You having a great year, intern. Intern's having a great year. He is. Uh, and before we roll out, can you tell everybody uh, where they can find the show? What? what, what where are they? <laughs>